Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Beverly Baptist Church. Particularly welcome to those uh, who are visiting or new with us this morning. It's great to have you with us. If you haven't been to one of our uh, cafe services before, this is sort of informal all-age worship. Um, but many of the elements up within it you'll recognise from, from any other church service. We'll have some songs, we'll have some prayer, uh, we'll read the Bible, we'll learn about what God is saying to us through it. Um, but there'll also be some video, there'll be opportunities to talk around your tables. And we'll see how things go over the course of the next hour or so. Just a couple of notices. Uh, next Sunday after our service is our AGM with a bring and share lunch. Uh, so please do try to be there if you're a regular here at uh, Beverly Baptist. And we'll be affirming the leadership team for the coming year. And as part of that, if you're a church member, please remember your voting slips for Chris. There's a ballot box at the back by the door. If you've got them with you today or bring them with you next week uh, to be returned by the start of the AGM and to be counted. And we'll also be signing off at that AGM on last year's accounts. We'll have a finance update. Uh, we'll have a couple of membership applications to consider. Uh, and the other main item for decision is uh, approving the constitution uh, for the charitable incorporated organisation, which we're uh, becoming as, in the process of becoming as a church. Uh, that's been circulated a couple of times already, but we'll send it round again this week so that people are fully prepared for that meeting. Do remember to look in our church library, which is just inside the prayer room on the left. There's a whole bookcase full of books there now. More books are arriving, so we need some people to take some of them away. So we've got space to put the new ones in. So do have a look through and see if there's anything there that catches your interest or you think might interest somebody you know. And please do take those with you um, and pass those on, read them uh, and do as you, as you need. You can bring them back if you want to when you finish with them, but you don't have to. Um, because there's plenty more coming in to take their place. Does anybody have anything to celebrate this morning? Any birthdays, wedding anniversaries? Pat? Yeah. Birthday? Yes. Happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Harry's birthday. All right, we'll take one for Harry. Who's taking one for Harry? Well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate. We can celebrate birthdays. We can celebrate uh, fun times together. We thank you that we can celebrate a new pair of glasses, Lord. We thank you for the health service and those who, who can help our bodies to work better when we need that. And Lord, we just thank you that in all these things you are with us. And we thank you that you are with us now as we come to worship you, that you are present by your spirit. And we pray that you would bless our time together. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin in song worship this morning, a song that calls us to come and to worship our God. Come now is the time to worship.
thank you that we can come to worship just as we are. We do not need to be anything special. We do not need to bring anything special. You welcome us into your presence as your beloved children. And so, Lord, we offer you all that we have and all that we are in worship. We worship the one who was from before the beginning, and yet you came to be known to us in Jesus. You were the word at the beginning.
Thank you, Lord, that your name is powerful. Thank you for Jesus who we worship, the one who died but has risen again, and who is Lord over all, Lord of our universe, Lord of the church, Lord of our lives. We worship you this morning, Lord Jesus, in your powerful name. Amen. Please do take a seat. Okay, so what are we looking at this morning? Well, when I was praying through what we should cover in this morning's service, I was thinking about what those of us who've uh, been in this hall, in the main hall of recent weeks, have been considering, and we've been working through uh, our statement of faith, the key things that we believe as a church. And today we're going to look at a Bible story which links uh, some of the recent things we've been looking at and some things we're going to look at in weeks to come. We're going to look at the story of a baptism, a special baptism, the baptism of Jesus, which tells us something about who Jesus was, which we looked at uh, at our cafe service, actually, in which the Holy Spirit is seen to act, as we looked a couple of weeks ago, uh, and it is a baptism, and next week we'll be looking at baptism. So it links together some of these key themes that we've been considering. So, an opening discussion question for your table. You've got post-it notes, so you write, scribble down the answers to this question. The question is, what is baptism? Now, you can answer that in terms of the practical act of what happens, or you might want to get a little bit more theological about what's happening in baptism. What does it mean? What does it signify? What is baptism? Have a little think. Scribble down your answers and then we'll stick them on the wall and see what we've got together. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got a baptism as an act of faith, a public commitment. There's lots of mention of water. Passing into the world of Jesus, okay. showing love for God, living life for God, an external expression of an internal commitment to Christ, declaration and testimony, witness, giving yourself to God to spend the rest of your life serving Him. Lots of really good answers there, and we'll unpack some of those uh, over the course of today, and we'll look at more uh, next week as well. I'm just going to say one thing right at the beginning, because a couple of the post notes picked up on this as well. And I think it's worth saying, baptism within the church these days is used in, by different churches in slightly different ways. I'm not going to get into deep theology and controversy, but I think it's worth uh, acknowledging that. Uh, in many churches, if you went to a service of baptism, I think we've got a picture, Dave. It would look a bit like, might look a bit like this. There we are the baptism of a baby, welcoming a child into the life of the church, praying uh, that uh, as they live in the community of the church and grow up, they may come to believe in Jesus uh, for themselves. Other churches using the word baptism, you'd think of something more like this picture here. Oh, maybe. There we are. She's from a Baptist church in North London. Somebody who's grown up, uh, made a commitment to following Jesus and Part of that commitment is getting baptised. As a Baptist church, that the second is our understanding of baptism. That this baptism is something that comes after faith. And that's the way that we baptise people uh, here. And are hoping to do so in a, a couple of months' time. We'll say more about that a bit later. But we do also recognise as a church that not everyone agrees mm -hmm. on that. Uh, and so we've always welcomed into the life of our church and the membership of our church uh, those who've been baptised as babies and believe that to be true baptism. So I don't want, in a sense, that to get in the way of what we're talking about now, but primarily, when we're talking about baptism within the context of a Baptist church, we're thinking of this, this latter picture of somebody who's come to faith in Jesus and is wanting to make a public testimony and, and commitment uh, to the church. Another question for you, moving on from here as we come to our story. You don't need to write anything down for this one. Just a couple of minutes around your tables. Let's brainstorm. What do you know about John the Baptist? 
See what you can come up with in a couple of minutes and I might have some brave people to shout out. And while you're doing that, for the young people I'm going to bring around some worksheets. Okay, so we're just going to think about this uh, for a couple of minutes. I've handed out to the young people um, a few worksheets on John the Baptist, which you can try and complete. If you listen carefully, you might get some clues in some of what I say to the answers to some of those questions as well. So John the Baptist, perhaps better John the Baptizer, cousin of Jesus. We've talked a bit about his birth, some strange and miraculous events there, visits of angels, prophesying that this will be a special child. Father who's unable to speak. John who the angel said would go on to prepare the way for the Lord. And when he next re-enters the story, we find him about 30 years old, seeking to do just that. He's become a wandering prophet. He's living in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey. He's dressed in clothes made of camel hair. And he's baptising people. And so we're just going to watch a little video clip to see John at work. Yeah. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and be baptised. That was John's message. Repentance means being sorry for the wrong things we have done. Making a conscious decision to seek to leave them behind. To turn away from them, to seek a better way. Key part of the Christian faith, becoming a Christian, is the recognition that the way we have been doing things is wrong. Expressing sorrow and regret that we've lived for ourselves rather than for God. Now obviously John's original hearers weren't becoming Christians because there wasn't yet such a thing. But the message of repentance still stood. Mark and Luke's Gospels both summarise John's message as one of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Because John had understood the Old Testament. When God said to Moses, he said, the, I am the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. John would have echoed the words of the prayer book written hundreds of years later. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent. And so God calls the people to repent, to be sorry. Not just to say sorry. He's very scathing about those who he thinks are just along for the ride and don't really believe his message. He's clear, as we saw in that clip, people must show that they are truly sorry by living a different way. True repentance is not just a turning from something, a turning to something new. And so he invites them to share that commitment to repentance and change with others by being baptised. John didn't invent baptism. The idea of being immersed in water was there in Jewish thought, sometimes as a, a way of cleansing themselves before they went to worship, to wash themselves clean. It had also become part of the act of conversion for a non-Jew who wanted to become a Jew. And both those ideas are there in John's baptism. The cleansing from the old way of life, which the person who repents is seeking to leave behind, and the conversion to a new way of life. In fact, the word that we translate repentance could be translated conversion. John is calling for a radical transformation to a new way of being. Yes, there will always be the continual need for repentance, for being sorry for the sins that his hearers and we will continue to commit. But he's wanting them to see that what they're saying and doing is a, is a significant step, an irreversible step in their lives as they turn to God. As we said, there's still that need for repentance today, to be sorry for what we've done that's wrong, sorry for our sins, to commit to seeking to leave them behind and to turn to God and to live a new way. And the God who John knew would forgive still forgives 
today. And so we're going to do three things now. Firstly, we're going to have a moment of quiet for each of us to be able to repent and to say sorry for the things that we know are wrong in our lives. To tell God we're truly sorry, to ask him to help us to live a different way. Then we're going to say a prayer together. The words will be on the screen. And then we'll sing together a song of recommitment. But first, just a moment of quiet for each of us in our hearts to say sorry to God and to seek his forgiveness. We can have the words up on the screen, David. <coughs> Can't make it work. I'll say them on our collective behalf. There we are. We've got them. These will be familiar to those of you from the Anglican tradition and perhaps others as well. Let's say this prayer together. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing together a song that commits to leaving behind what we once had, to seeking to know Jesus more. We're going to sing All I Once Held Dear. Let's stand and sing together.
offer you all that we have and all that we are. And commit again to turning and to seeking after you. And to following you wherever you may lead. Strengthen us, we pray, by your Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to take a short break now, just a couple of minutes, chance to refill your tea and coffee if you wish to. Do take your cup back up with you, please, if, if you want to refill. Uh, or take a short comfort break, uh, and then we'll come back together for another 20 minutes or so just to continue to look at this story together. But a couple of minutes just for a quick break. We're going to move on and look at uh, the rest of the story. For the children and young people, you should have hopefully been given over the course of that break a few sheets of paper. There's a couple of drawings already there of the, uh, the scene of Jesus' baptism. And there's also got the blank sheets. What I want to encourage you to do over the next uh, 10 minutes or so as you look at the rest of this story is to either draw the scene from scratch yourself on one of the blank sheets or colour in and enhance and add to uh, the pictures I've given you. And if you bring me a good picture at the end, then there might be a little prize uh, for those uh, who do it. Let's see if we can manage to get everything that we mentioned into that picture uh, as we go through the story. We're going to watch another video clip now, which takes us on to the next stage of what happens. So Jesus now enters the story. Uh, we must remember, up to this point, Jesus has been living a life of, of obscurity. We know all the stories surrounding Jesus' birth. But almost nobody at the time did. His mother, Mary. Joseph, but it appears quite probable Joseph has died by this point. Maybe a couple of other members of the family. How much has Mary even told Jesus himself about it? We can't even be entirely sure. For 30 years, he's been living what seems to almost everybody as the ordinary life of a child growing up with his family, training to be a carpenter. Nothing special, no different from any other child out there. But all that is about to change. John has been talking slightly cryptically of a special one who is to come, the one that he is preparing the way for. And now he points at Jesus and he says, he is the one. And in his description of Jesus, John gives a little bit of an insight into how he can be so sure that those who have repented and been baptised will find forgiveness from God. He says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Most of John's hearers would have been familiar with the picture. We might be less so. The temple in Jerusalem where lambs would have been taken and offered as a symbol of people seeking forgiveness. And as the offering is made, the priest would assure them that God has accepted their offering and forgiven them. And Jesus, John says, has come to do that on an even greater level. Not just to be the offering for one individual at a time, but so that the sins of the whole world might be forgiven. And John's belief that that is who Jesus is, was confirmed, he says, as Jesus comes to be baptised, the Holy Spirit appears, the other Gospel writers tell us, in the form of a dove and a voice from heaven. This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is no ordinary baptism. This is no ordinary man being baptised. This is the very Son of God. Which does pose the slight question of why Jesus is being baptised at all. If baptism is about turning from sin to God, why is the perfect Son of God being baptised? Well, it certainly seems that John was slightly taken by surprise when Jesus came. This is a clip from another cinematic representation of the life of Jesus, which I think picks up on some of John's reaction when Jesus comes to be baptised. Jesus doesn't have a sinful life to turn away from in the way we do. But this is a turning point in his life. 
a dedication of the rest of his life to God as he begins a public mission and ministry. And so it's right that he makes a public testimony. And it's as he does so that the Holy Spirit descends and that voice from heaven, which I think is not just for the benefit of those watching, but also for Jesus. We thought a couple of weeks ago about the Holy Spirit as the spirit of adoption, the one who confirms to us that we are in God's family as his beloved children. And so the spirit confirms to Jesus his status as God's son, the special one, the chosen one, affirming that God is pleased with him. And I think that assurance would have been continually necessary as he walks the difficult path that he has before him. The trials which begin straight away as immediately after his baptism, he goes into the wilderness for 40 days and is tempted by the devil. The spirit giving him confidence and assurance and power. Yes, Jesus as divine, as God, always had the spirit within but the spirit now falls on him in a new way in greater measure filling him and empowering him for all that will be ahead a path in which he will continually need to rely on that spirit that connection with his father in heaven in order to be the person he's been called to be in order to fulfill his mission as the lamb of god the savior of the world And so it is with us. As we thought earlier about the need for repentance to be something that we do time and again, so too we need to be seeking time and again for the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us, to empower us, to fill us. If even Jesus needed that, how much more we as frail, fallen human beings. so we're going to take some time now to ask the spirit to fall on each one of us we're going to sing a song in which we ask the spirit to transform us to empower us to reassure us again of his loving presence in our lives we'll stay seated as we sing spirit of the living god
to us, fill us, renew us, transform us, empower us. Give us your presence in our lives day by day. Come and do your work among us, that we might respond to your call, wherever it leads. coming to the end of our service but just one more thing before we do as we think about how the spirit might be calling us to respond we've been thinking about a baptism today we'll consider baptism a little more next week and also communion i just want to do one more thing before we finish a little straw poll put your hands up if you've been baptized in any way that you want to interpret that word as a believer or as a child if you've been baptized Keep your hand up if you can remember that baptism. Okay, put your hands down. Who was baptised over 20 years ago? Put your hand up. Okay, keep your hand up if it was over 30. Over 40. Over 50. I'm going to stop there. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long ago it was. The important thing is what it means. That visible sign, that testimony of repentance, turning to God, living life in the power of the Spirit. We're planning for a baptism service, or services if we need them. We have one penciled in for the 18th of September. We'll do more if needed. We've got baptism classes planned. We already have some people interested, but we haven't started them yet. So if there's anyone here who part of what the Spirit is saying this morning is that call to explore baptism. Please do speak to myself or another member of the leadership team and we can include you in that. that at, by saying you'll do the baptism classes, that's not saying you'll definitely get baptised at the end of them. It's a chance to explore whether that is what God is calling you to do at this stage in your life. So please do be open to what the Spirit may be saying in that way. We're going to close our worship with another song. I struggle to think what to, to, what to sing at the end, but... I've chosen a song that picks up on those words of John the Baptist as he speaks of Jesus as the saviour of the world. It takes us through Jesus' life, all that he's done, expressing our wonder, sometimes our lack of understanding, but ultimately our assurance in the power of the Spirit's work and that one day all will see that the saviour of the world has come. Let's stand and sing together.
thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Children, please do bring me your pictures and we'll see uh, what prizes we might have. Do stay, chat, and share fellowship, pray together. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.